Hi everybody, welcome to my presentation on accruals and prepayments. This is often a sort of difficult topic for my students when they are starting their level three studies. Um, so hopefully this will give you a good sort of supportive look at how they are processed and what exactly they are. So let's just get started. Um, first of all, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm AAT qualified level four as at the end of December 2017. Um, I'm working finance and I've been working in finance now for two years as an assistant accountant. But my ultimate ambition is now to train to teach AAT in the future. Um, this presentation is all my own work, it is my own materials. Um, and they're just put together in terms of um, helping you understand the key concepts behind AAT rather than following the actual syllabus um, sort of point by point. So um, just understanding the um, key concepts will really help embed that and support you as you go up further and further through the levels. So I hope this helps um, and I hope it proved to be beneficial to you and I really wish that you enjoy the experience that is AAT. So a good place to start then is what are accruals and prepayments? So the purpose of accruals and prepayments are to ensure that accounts are formed according to the accruals concept. Now this is something that is going to be sort of talked about um, quite a lot during the studies that you do, um, this word, these two words of accruals concept, you'll come across it um, quite a lot, so it's worth keeping it in mind. But what the meaning of that is, is that it means that all the costs and the revenues are accounted for in the period to which they relate. So in our financial year, we are only going to report on costs that actually relate to that year and income that we actually earned in that year. So this then means that some of the costs and revenues um, will actually have to be accrued for before payment or entry into the ledgers. And some of them will have to be prepaid after we've received money or we've actually paid money out. So this is a really important um, sort of element of accounting because then it makes that your uh, financial statements are actually going to be true and fair. So you've got your accruals concept term and you've also got this term here period to which they relate which you may see from time to time um, or you may see it in a slightly different wording. So we're talking about accruals and prepayments that are um, the costs and revenues to make sure that they are accounted for in the period to which they relate. So looking at this in a little bit more detail then, so how does it actually work? So we've got accrued income. So this is income that the business has earned, but has not been recorded either through receiving payment or invoicing. So it might be that you raise the invoice the following month, perhaps to admin delays or staff shortages, that kind of thing. But you actually earned the money because you've delivered something to a customer, you've given a service uh, in the month previous to when the invoice is going to be raised. Prepaid income is payment that you've received in advance from a customer um, for income that's actually related to a future period. So um, this could be a service contract. So a customer pays in April for a contract that runs from May for a year. Um, that payment is actually prepaid because you haven't earned the income uh, because that contract doesn't start until May. You also then want to make sure that you're fairly apportioning that income um, across that whole year um, because you, you're not going to earn twice as much income in one month if it's a service contract, for example, um, if it's going to last a period of 12 months. Then you have accrued expenses. And these are expenses that are related to the given period, but they haven't yet been recorded. So that means you've either uh, you've not received an invoice from your supplier or you haven't paid out any money. So there hasn't been any record in the accounts of these expenses. The classic example here being utility bills. 
they always come in arrears, sometimes monthly, sometimes quarterly. Um, and as such, they need to be put into the accounts. Um, but we haven't got an invoice for them. So we need to accrue for them. And we need to accrue based on probably on historical data is, is the um, usual um, usual way of uh, recording them. And then finally, we have prepaid expenses. So this is when we've already made payment for something um, that relates to a future period. Um, again, a typical example here is rents. It could be rates, service charges, that kind of thing that you need to pay in advance. So if you rent out a warehouse, they ask you for rent three months in advance. Um, so you pay that out but you have to prepay that across those three months so that you're only having the cost in each month that is relevant for that month. Um, so each month you're getting the benefit of having that warehouse. So you need to make sure the cost of having the warehouse for that month is shown in the accounts. So there are four different types of um, income and expenses, accruals and prepayments um, that you can get. So before we actually move on to actually working some um, examples through, we really need to understand how this fits into dead click and how this fits into your T account. Is it an asset or is it a liability? So before we do that, I'm just going to go through dead click again, just as an overview. I did do a previous presentation on this, um, which is in the file section. So please do have a look at that if you wish. Um, but let's just give a, a little brief overview of how how dead click works and how this can help you apply it to accruals and prepayments. OK, so here's our basic T account. Um, and the one thing that I've always done in my T accounts is I always put this little arrow up here. And this was one thing that really helped me uh, when I was first learning about um, T accounts and double entry. Um, and it just helps to kind of solidify what it is that you're looking at and how this actually works. So let's remind ourselves of what dead click means. So on the debit side, we have our expenses, we have our assets and we have drawings. And on our credit side, we have liabilities, income and capital. The important thing here is to remember that a credit in a liability account is only a credit if the liability to the business is increasing. So this is why I always put this little arrow at the top, because it just reminds me on what basis we're putting things into an account. So if something is increasing, then you can apply dead click. So if you go out and buy some stationery, the stationery account for that amount of money, say you pay £10 for um, a box of paper and you then put that into your accounts, that box of paper is going to go into, into a stationery account. Because that expense has increased, we would debit the stationery account with that £10 because we've increased that cost to the business. So if we were going to take that paper back, then um, we would then be decreasing it. So it would then be a credit into that account. So it's the opposite. And it, it works exactly the same. If you increase an asset, it's a debit. Increase drawings, it's a debit. And likewise, liabilities. If you increase your liabilities, for example, if you owe more VAT to um, HMRC, then that increases the liability that you owe HMRC and therefore you're going to credit that liability account. Same for the income, you make more sales, so you're going to credit your sales account um, and if you have more money put in, then it will increase your capital account. So this, this was a really key point for me, this little arrow up here, very small, but it made the world of difference when I was trying to remember how to apply dead click and I'm sure the majority of you out there are going to have struggled at some point just getting your head around oh what side does this go on um, so why don't you give it a try it, it may just help so that's our little review then of dead click um, so let's have a look at actually how does this relate to accruals and prepayments and more importantly why why do we debit and why do we credit Okay, so 
let's have a look at each one of those um, accruals and prepayments, each one of the incomes and expenses uh, in turn. First of all, we've got prepaid expenses. So prepaid expenses, um, as we saw earlier, was money that's been paid out for services or goods that relate to a future period. Now, that prepaid expense is not relevant to certain periods of the year. So, for example, um, you might have paid out for, let's say, for your rent, like we, we were talking about before, um, but that only covers, say, January to March. And at the end of December, if your financial year ends at December, you may have paid out that money. Um, but that isn't an expense for December. That's an expense to spread across January, February, March. So the prepaid expense account holds that money that you've paid out. So it doesn't sit in the rent account because we don't want to increase our rent costs for December by that payment when it relates to January to March. Um, so our prepaid expense account is going to increase. Um, and the reason that it increases and we put it as a debit is because a prepaid expense account is an asset. OK, so that money has been paid out, but because it relates to a future period, it is still an asset to us. Accrued income. So this is this also sits on the uh, debit side. So this is um, money that. Uh, we haven't yet received from customers or we haven't yet invoiced uh, a customer for. So this is effectively um, sort of unrecorded receivables. So how your trade debtors or your trade receivables um, sit in the debit side because they are an asset. It's exactly the same as the accrued, the accrued income because it's just that we haven't raised an invoice for that yet and, and the customer hasn't paid us. So therefore it hasn't been recorded in our income accounts. So therefore, we need to accrue for it. So our accrued income account is an asset account, just like our um, trade receivables account is as well. So moving on to our credit side then. So we then have accrued expenses. So this is for expenses that relate to the current period that we haven't paid out for yet or we haven't received an invoice for. Um, so as we were talking earlier about utility bills, it might be electric, gas, water, uh, all paid in arrears. So um, you need to make sure that you accrue for it in the months that it relates to. So because of this, this is the same as a liability. And the reason it's a liability is because at some point we know we are going to have to pay out in order to settle that. So we know, for example, it's like your um, VAT account, your VAT uh, that you owe to HMRC. That's a liability to the business because at some point you will need to settle your VAT account with HMRC. So it's a liability to the business because you will have to pay out. So for the expenses, we know at some point we will have our utility bills come into the business, um, but we won't. Um, we'll, we'll then pay out for them. So we need to make sure that we can um, account for them as a liability because at some point we will have to pay out for them. And then finally, we have prepaid income. So the prepaid income, so a customer's paid us in advance, we're doing a contract for them. Um, perhaps it doesn't start until the month after they've paid. So this actually becomes a liability because we haven't earned that income yet. So if they pay in April and the contract starts in May, the payment that's made in April um, is effectively irrelevant. And the only reason it's relevant to the accounts is because it's actually come in uh, to the bank. So we have to record it into the bank, but we can't record that as revenue because the actual contract doesn't start until May. So we don't earn the first bit of that income until May. So that is actually a liability to us. So our prepaid income account sits um, sits in liabilities. So therefore, when we increase that, we're going to be crediting it. So we have prepaid expenses and accrued income. So these two sit on the debit side when they increase. And accrued expenses and prepaid income 
sit on the credit side when they increase. So one of the things that I sort of took a step back when I was first learning this was to try and break the question down. And there were a few things that I used to ask myself and something I used to do in order to make sure that I was understanding the periods in which the question was talking about. Because sometimes that can be real key. You can know what you're doing. Um, you can understand the concepts. You can know what your accruals and prepayments are. But if you miscalculate how many months you're accruing for or how many months you're prepaying for, then that can ruin the question for you. So this, for me, really worked in just understanding in an exam under that pressure, um, just exactly what the question was asking me and pulling out that key information. So first of all, the, the obvious one, look at the transaction and what period does it cover? So if you're given rent, what period does the rent cover? OK, if you're told that the business hasn't had any utility bills, when was the last bill that came in? Um, so always have a look at the transaction and identify what period that transaction actually covers. Next, what financial year? What are the dates of your financial year? So not every company works on the same financial year. It might be January to December. It could be April to March. Um, so have a look. What does the question say about the financial year? Because that will ultimately tell you when you're preparing your accruals and prepayments at that year end, just how many months you need to be accruing for or prepaying for. And then I used to do a little trick um, for me that just helped me kind of visualise things a little bit in terms of a timeline. So what I used to do is I used to draw out just a little grid, quick grid like this on a scrap, paper, scrap bit of paper in the exam. And I used to draw out a little grid, put some months on, a bit longer than, than a year, just, just to uh, make sure that I captured everything. And then I used to put a little line at what dates that this bit, that the transaction, what does that cover? So where in the year is that? And then I used to draw on where my financial year is. So on this example, you can see it's January to December and my expense or income, my transaction here um, was from November to March. So I used to draw these two little lines on. And then what I used to do was I would then just colour in. So if, for example, uh, we were going to be prepaying this, we can see here that at the end of this year, the November and December one is absolutely fine because this is our financial year and this is our expenses. So we know that we want to be putting costs into the accounts only for those two months of that expense, that income um, transaction. OK, then we can see that we've got one, two, three months that we then need to prepay. If, if we've paid out for it already. So I used to just draw this out very quickly because I just found in the stress of an exam, it can be so easy to miscount months on your fingers or in your head. And I just found it was so much easier to be able to move along and just count um, the boxes. So you'd just be counting one, two, three, four, five. And you could just then see at a glance exactly how, how uh, many months you needed to prepay. I felt also by blocking this in here, you could see the relevant months and the months that are outside the financial year. As we go forward, we're going to move into some examples. But as we go forward, hopefully you'll be able to see how this timeline works in as well, because I've put a timeline in all of the questions. Um, so you'll be able to see how this kind of relates as we go forward. So let's start an example. A business purchases a software licence at a cost of £1,800 on 1st of February for a new employee. The licence is valid for one year from the date of purchase. The business has a financial year of the 1st of January to the 31st of December. Calculate the adjustment for year ending 2017. So let's pull out the important elements of this question. 
So first of all, we know that our license is valid for one year from the date of purchase. And we know that we purchased it on the 1st of February. So we know that the dates are valid the 1st of Feb to the 31st of Jan. We also know that our financial year of the business is the 1st of Jan to the 31st of December. And I've put here cost per month. So this was worked out by dividing our £1,800 by our 12 months. And that brings us out at £150 per month for that particular licence. So let's have a look at it in timeline form. So here's my little chart and where my license validity is. So it's from February to the end of Jan. And then let's have a look at the financial year. We've got January to December. So we know, looking at this, that the cost of that license through all of these months for the year end accounts is absolutely fine. We know that we need to pay, we need to um, include the cost of the license for those months there because you can see that's where the year, the financial year ends and starts. And then this is where the license validity starts and finishes. So these are in line. So that can sit in the 2017 accounts. But if we look at the license validity, we've also got one month here in January that is after our year end. So we paid out on the 1st of February, we paid out £1,800 for a license that finished on the 31st of January. But our year end is the 31st of December. So we need to make sure that we are only putting in the cost of that license for 11 months because the final month of that license sits in the new financial year. So how do we actually do this? So we've got all of our information at the top there and here's our T accounts. So we've got a licenses account, we've got our bank account, and we've got our prepaid expense account. So what's the first thing that happened? The first thing that happened is that we purchased the license. So we made a payment for this license, so it's going to come out of the bank. So that £1,800 is going to come out of the bank. And we're going to pop it into our licenses expense account. So let's just review these two transactions. Let's apply our dead click. So the bank is an asset and the licenses account is an expense account. So applying dead click, we know that the licenses account is going to increase because it's an expense to the business to buy this license. So that £1,800 goes on the debit side and the bank account is going to be an entry on the credit side because the bank is an asset but it's, it's um, not increasing, it's decreasing. So because the asset is decreasing, it's going to sit in the credit side. So you can see straight away you've got your double entry here. But as we were saying earlier, we've got one month of that that doesn't actually apply to the year ending for, the, for 2017. Because our licence runs until the 31st of January. So we need to make sure that this account is only showing the cost of the licence between February and the end of December, the end of our financial year. So it started in February, the end of our year is in December. So what do we need to do? So we know that one month's worth of that is £150 because we've already done that calculation. So we need to credit because we need to reduce our expense account. So we need to credit that account £150. And we need to debit it 
into our prepaid expense account. So remember, looking at your dead click, the license account is an expense account, which in dead click sits on the debit side when it increases. So we're going to decrease it, so it's a credit. And our prepaid expense account is an asset account. So we're now going to increase that account because we're taking this £150 uh, worth of this license and we're going to pop it in the prepaid expenses account at the end of that year. So then what does that mean? So if we now have a look at the balances on the account, so we've got the total of 1800 so we're going to have to make a, a, an adjustment here. So the, the balancing figure is £1,650. And that figure is then going to go on to our statement of profit and loss. So this figure here then becomes what gets entered as an expense, as a debit, on the statement of profit and loss. Now this does then go on to um, drawing up your statements and your extended trial balance. I'm not going into that in that in this particular presentation, um, but this just shows you how that figure then moves. So the other side of that entry there would be that it gets debited into the statement of profit and loss. So looking at our prepaid expense account then, so we pop the figures in, but we know that our total is going to be. And then we're going to credit the account because we're going to pop it as a as a debit into the statement of financial position. So again, I don't cover it in this presentation, but your debit would then be into the statement of financial position as your adjustment at that year end. OK, so that was our prepaid expenses. Let's have a look at prepaid income. So a business receives payment for a support contract on the 13th of August for the period the 1st of September to the 28th of February for the value of £3,600. The business has a financial year of 1st of January to 31st of December. Calculate the adjustment for year ending 31st of December 2017. So let's have a look at what we know from the question. So we know that our contract is valid the 1st of September to the 28th of February. We know our financial year dates, the 1st of January to the 31st of December. And we can work out our cost, by, cost per month by doing 3,600 divided by six months, which is 600 per month. So let's have a look at it on the timeline. So you can see here I've put in the contract period, so it's September to the end of Feb. So you've got your one, two, three, four, five, six months there. And let's add in our financial year. So our financial year is January to December. Our contract period is September to the end of Feb. So straight away, we can see that one, two, three, four months worth of that income is related to 2017. But two months worth is actually related to 2018. So we don't want to show this as income, these two months as income in our um, income account for 2017. So again, you can have a look at it where these two lines match up. So this is the relevant um, section for that particular year that you're doing the year end for. And then these two months where the contract is still valid will then fall into the next year. So let's have a look at how through the um, T accounts. So let's bring them up. So we've got our support income account. We've got our bank account and we've got our prepaid income account. So let's have a look again. What's the first thing that happens? So a business receives payment for the support contract on the 13th of August for the value of 3,600. So if we're receiving payment, 
it means our bank account, our asset account, is going to increase. So think back to our dead click. Dead click, the asset account is on the debit side when it increases. So that money has increased our bank account, so it sits in the debit side. And the opposite entry to that is going to be in our income account. So again, think back to your dead click. Your income account is a credit when it increases. And you can see there that the income account has been increased by £3,600. But as we discovered on the last slide, we know that that isn't correct for the year of 2017. We, don't, we haven't earned that whole amount of money for 2017. So now we need to make sure that we make the adjustment in order to ensure that our accounts at the end of 2017 are showing the correct amount of income in this support income account. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to debit the income account because we want to reduce it. We need to debit the income account by two months worth of that contract. So we've got our cost per month here of £600. So £1,200 becomes the amount of money that has not been earned in 2017. So then we need to make sure that, that we have actually prepaid that. So then that then becomes um, in our prepayment account a credit because our prepayment account for income is a liability account because we haven't earned that income yet. So that liability account is going to increase by £1,200. So therefore it's a credit. So let's then have a look at um, closing off the accounts and uh, moving it into the uh, statements, the year-end statements. So first of all, our income account here. So our income account, uh, we're going to balance off uh, so we can see our total is 3,600. And our prepaid income account, our total is 1,200. So over here, our statement of profit and loss is going to show the balancing figure of £2,400. So that £2,400 is the value, is, so is the income that we've earned from this support contract in the year 2017. So that will then um, be credited uh, on the statement of profit and loss because it's an income account and that will be the income for that particular support contract for that year. Then likewise, on the prepaid income account, we need to balance it off. So our balancing figure here will go into our statement of uh, statement uh, financial position. Sorry. Um, then that will be credited into there because it's a liability account. And so that is going to be our adjustment. Our adjustment is going to be £1,200. Um, so that our prepayments, our prepaid income at the end of 2017 shows the correct amount and our support income at the end of 2017 will show the money that is relevant to that year. So that's two examples of the prepayments, the prepaid expenses previously and the prepaid income just now. So the third one that we had uh, was um, accruals. So let's have a look at the uh, accruals. So a business is preparing their accounts for year ending the 31st of March 2017, but haven't yet received their electricity bill. The last quarter's bill for period ending 31st of December was £1,500. The business has a financial year of 1st of April to the 31st of March. Calculate the adjustment for year ended 31st of March. Again, let's have a look at what we can pull out from this question. So, first of all, we know that the last quarter, so this is where you need to really read the question carefully, the last quarter's bill ended the 31st of December. Here. Okay? So we know that a quarter is three months, so that bill that we last received was the 1st of October to the 31st of December. Our financial year 
runs 1st of April to the 31st of March. And our cost then is £1,500 for three months. So that makes it £500 per month based on the previous bill. So remember, with accruals, you generally tend to base things on what the historical data tells you. So if you know that a quarter, um, the quarter ending the 31st of December was £1,500 for electricity, then we can accrue on that basis. So let's have a look at the timeline. So we can see here that this is where our previous bill is sitting. And then we can see that this is our financial year. So this, this, this bill here, this would have been um, this bill that had already come in previously. That is sitting within our financial year. So that's absolutely fine. But what we also need to consider is that we haven't got a bill yet for January to March. So at the end of March, we need to make sure that we've accrued to show the cost of the electricity for those three months. To make sure that each of those months, so for the whole year, you have the correct cost. So let's have a look at accounts then. So we've got our electricity account and we've got our accrued expenses account. So remember with this one, there is no bank account because there isn't any money paid out or received. So, first of all, because we're going to have to show the cost of that electricity for those three months, then we're going to have to accrue for it into our electricity account because we want our electricity account to increase by £1,500 to show three months worth of that electricity at the year end. So we're going to debit our electricity account to increase that account. So remember, expenses is on the debit side when increasing in dead click. So we're going to increase our electricity by £1,500. And the opposite side to that is going to be the in the accrued expenses account. So let's stop again. Let's have a think about the types of accounts that we're using. So the electricity is the expense account. We increase it so it's on the debit side. And we're also going to be increasing our accrued expenses account, which is a liability account, remember, because we know at some point we're going to have to settle uh, that liability. We know we're going to get a bill in for electricity at some point, so we have to settle it. So that is a liability to us. So as that liability increases, it sits on the, on the uh, credit side. So let's have a look at uh, where the accounts then end so that we can transfer it to our um, financial statements. So accrued expenses um, will obviously balance off at £1,500, a uh, total off, sorry, at, at £1,500. So our balancing figure is going to be £1,500, which goes over to the statement of profit and loss. It will be debited into the statement of profit and loss as the adjustment. So let's then have a look at our accrued expenses. So we've got £1,500 and then we're going to debit the statement of financial position. Um, sorry, credit the statement of financial position, my apologies, because that is going to be a liability. So that's going to be your adjustment. So we're going to have to make sure that we've got enough money to cover that when the bill eventually comes in. So it's a liability for us, so therefore it's a credit. OK, so let's have a look at the next one then. A business has a financial year of 1st of April to 31st of March. At the end of the year, it sold some furniture for £500 in March, but won't invoice the customer until April when the furniture is received. Calculate the adjustment required for year ended 31st of March. OK, so again, let's have a look at what we know about this question. So we know that we're only concerned here about March, this sale that happened in March. It's happened at the very end of the financial year. The business isn't going to receive the furniture from its supplier until April, so it's not going to invoice the customer. 
until April. But we've made the sale in March. We've got our financial year of 1st of April to 31st of March. And we know that our cost is £500. So let's have a, have a look at quick timeline. So here's my timeline. And here is where the um, invoice will be raised. So we know that it's not going to be recorded into the accounts until April. So our financial year here uh, runs April to the end of March. But that invoice for that £500 isn't going to be raised until April. However, because it was sold in March, we need to make sure that that income is sitting in the um, in the year ending 31st of March. So we need to make this accrual here. So you can see that there, there is no overlap here at all. So we'll raise the invoice in April, but we need to accrue for it in March. So let's have works in the accounts. So there we've got our T accounts, our furniture account and our accrued, accrued income account. So our furniture account, which is an income account because we're making sales, we're selling it, it's our revenue stream, is the £500 here. So because it's going to be increasing that because we're saying that we sold that extra piece of furniture in March, we're going to credit it because that's our income increasing, which is credit in dead click. And the opposite side to that is going to be a debit into the accrued income account. So think about the account again. The accrued income account is an asset account because that is effectively the trade receivables account. So it works exactly the same way the accrued income account as the trade receivables account because if we'd invoice that customer in March, they would have been part of the trade receivables. But because we're not invoicing until the month after, we need to put the accrual through. So that account is an asset account. So when it increases, it's a debit. So let's have a look at the totals here. So furniture account totals 500. So our balancing figure is £500 for the Statement of Profit and Loss Adjustment. So that £500 will then be credited as the adjustment for the Statement of Profit and Loss. And in the Accrued Income account, our total is 500 again. So we will then um, debit the Statement of Financial Position and that will then be the other side to that entry. So that, that's going to be the adjustment. So these, these are the adjustment figures for your financial statements uh, when you're producing those year-end accounts. So hopefully those four examples have really given you um, a better understanding of it. As I say, it does move into the um, extended trial balance in your statements, um, but I, I obviously haven't got time to go through it on this video. I'm, I'm very aware of, of timings. Um, so just want to finish off now with um, a few final thoughts. Being able to apply the dead click concept will help with double entry for accruals and prepayments. So as I've gone through each question, um, we've had a look at why we're debiting or crediting those accounts what type of account they are, and therefore what side of dead click do they sit on. So really understanding dead click will help with being able to do the double entry for your accruals and prepayment. Focus on the dates you are given in the question, what's your transaction date, and how they fit within the financial year. So have a look, draw out your little timeline, identify what the overlap is, so therefore what is okay to sit in that year or if you need to accrue for it, if it doesn't sit in that year, um, and prepay it. Um, and ask the question as well, how much should you be expecting to pay or receive each month? 
So that's the breaking down. So that's the contract at £3,600 was for six months. So you know that you're only going to earn £600 per month. So know what you're going to be expecting to see. And that can help you sense check your, um, your answers as well, basically. So again, just recapping, when entering the debits and credits, think back to the type of account. What type of account is increasing and then apply the dead click. So if your expense account is increasing, it's a debit account. If your income account is increasing, it's a credit. And then ultimately, as with anything on any type of studying, but especially with the AAT courses, time, practice and patience will get you there. Accruals and prepayments is such a hard concept to grasp when you first start doing it. I remember really tearing my hair out at times, um, but I promise you it does get easier. When you um, go out to work in finance, you'll find that it comes a lot easier. You'll find that you can think about what dates it's relevant to um, a bit easier. And every company, every different, depending on the size of the business, may process their accruals and prepayments slightly differently. But the, the basics behind it is that the costs and revenues are, are um, accounted for in the period to which they relate. Um, the process on how they put it into the accounts might vary slightly from your studies, um, but the actual underlying message and the actual underlying um, knowledge is exactly the same. So good luck, everybody. I hope this has helped. Um, please do leave me a comment um, if uh, you've you've enjoyed it, if you've spotted any mistakes, perhaps anything you think I can improve on, um, hopefully getting to uh, become a teacher at some point. Um, so I would really welcome your your feedback on my video. Keep practicing, guys, and I promise you will get there.